so welcome to this new video of the new week. Happy Monday to everybody, or if, hang on, just bringing that down, otherwise my chin seems to, I've noticed that sometimes when I do videos, I think it's because I've tried to get in the five o'clock, see that's what it is, I'm trying to get the five o'clock somewhere flag in, and to kind of get that in, I feel like I disappear slightly, so it's almost like I've got to raise, raise myself up. Um, so thank you to everyone who's joined this video. Thank you to everybody who has just recently subscribed. Welcome to this little growing community that we have here where we talk about the truth and you can have an opinion even if it differs from ours and as long as you are respectful, you are, it's okay to have it. <sighs> um, yeah, so in this video I'm going to talk about a little bit of backtracking that Harry seems to be doing. Um, and explore a little bit more of the book and I'm going to touch on the alleged physical fight that seemed to happen seemed to have happened between William and Harry and I'm going to talk about my perspective on this so if you'd like to join me in this discussion let's discuss um, then please do and if you don't know by now you should and if you're new here grab your drink of choice, whether it be tea, whether it be coffee, whether you are still doing a, a healthy detox after Christmas, or perhaps you are doing dry January or dry rest of the year, as some of you might be doing, um, whether you would like a glass of lemonade or whether you would like to add a little something to that drink of choice. Um, because as I always say, and the flag behind me says it is five o'clock somewhere. So let's grab that drink and let's dive right in. So, <sighs> so Harry seems to be backtracking on certain things um, which in a way is making him seem a lot worse. Now I also want to talk about some of the comments because as I, I, I know and I think all of us know that when you start talking about Harry and Meghan it does bring in people who disagree. Now I, I really don't mind anyone disagreeing. You are entitled to have an opinion um but what i find interesting is when people feel the need to be quite aggressive and that speaks volumes to me if you feel that you disagree with somebody um fine but it's interesting how people feel the need to be quite aggressive in disagreeing to the point where they make it quite personal like i've certainly noticed since this book has come out and I've talked about it, that I'm getting more attacks again against me as a therapist. For example, things like, um, you are quite judgmental as a therapist. Um, I would not want you as a therapist. And that's fine. That's fine. Again, you can have your opinion. It's okay. But I just want to explore this myth. And I have touched on this before. This myth that just because I'm a therapist, and I do a YouTube channel, it doesn't mean that I cannot have an opinion that's outside the world of therapy. So what I do here is I give you my professional perspective, along with my own personal perspective that can at times differ from a professional one. This is in a way like saying um, a doctor who treats their patients must behave like a doctor outside of being a doctor. Um, you, We know that there are doctors out there that, that smoke, that drink, but promote being healthy with their patients. Um, there are teachers that teach their children a certain way in class, but perhaps don't behave the same way um, with their own children, perhaps even. Um, so this this kind of, like I say, this myth of a therapist must behave like a therapist outside of um, 
their clients. Now, do I do I behave this way with clients? Absolutely not, because at the end of the day, they're they're clients and they're coming to me for a reason. But what I also find quite interesting with these particular people is that they are making excuses for Harry's behaviour um, because it's Harry. So this he's allowed to speak his truth, which frustrates me because this isn't truth. This is perception, perspective, um, because in the world of therapy, we know that your perspective, your pers perception can be skewed. It is based around things that have happened to you in life. Your the what things that you believe, not necessarily to be true, but you believe them. So you kind of act accordingly around that. So if your truth is the truth, then why would you be coming to therapy? Because that would be it. Well, this is this is what I believe. This is the truth. Don't need to go any further with that. The whole reason that you come to therapy is because it's possible that the way you think and feel isn't correct. So you want to explore that a little bit more to find out if that's true. So this kind of, uh, like I say, this the way that people uh, have kind of, certainly I've seen in the comments, um, and they go into my held for review folder, so thankfully I'm able to see them, but they attack you as a therapist. Um, and again, fine. Um, I know who I am. I know that the way I work with clients, that I am entitled to come on here, my own personal channel, and disagree with Harry's behaviour. And I do. I'm not going to make allowances for um, the way Harry has portrayed himself in this book. Now, are there certain elements I can understand? Yes. But Harry is kind of going on this um, campaign of hurting other people. And I, as a therapist, and I'm pretty sure most therapists, will never be okay or condone you to heal yourself, hurting other people. So Harry talks about, I'm, I'm allowed to, to write this book. These are, this is my way of healing. Okay, if that's how you see it, but it's not correct. It is not correct to publicly humiliate and talk about personal things to do with your family um, when you're trying to heal yourself. What a therapist would say is, by all means, have a journal, write things down, talk about things with your family. Um, there is healing there. I don't believe a therapist would ever say, write about, um, well, no, they would agree with writing about your experience, absolutely. That if you wanna write a book about your experience, absolutely. However, um, they wouldn't agree with attacking your nearest and dearest to create that healing. I don't understand how that would heal anybody because that just creates more problems. And if, if the therapist, which I would be remiss to think that a therapist is saying this, I don't believe a therapist would be, uh, not ethically anyway, um, telling Harry to do this. So as a person, as a therapist, I do disagree, absolutely disagree with this way of Harry thinking this is a good way to heal. Um, and then of course then he's, so he's come on and he's, he's, he's had these interviews, he said these things in the book. And I, don't, I do want to talk about the, the rumours that have circulated of that the ghostwriter was fired um and the rumors of Megan taking over the writing of the book I believe this and I tell you why because in reading some of the book that I've read and from other people the first half of the book seems very mature um quite heartfelt um, it talks about how he felt regarding the loss of his mother. It talks about his military service, albeit some of the things in there I don't necessarily agree with. Um, but he, it, it seems different. As soon as he starts talking about Megan, he brings Megan into the book. The book changes. 
it changes how it's written. It's almost sycophantic um, and quite troubling, actually. So even though I think there are certain troubling things in the, in the beginning of the book, um, certainly, but it just reads differently. It, it reads differently. So it makes me think that the first bit of that book before Megan is written by the ghostwriter. And as soon as the bit about Megan is brought in, this is written by Megan, which leads me to this alleged argument, fight that happened. And again, we have the frustrating thing of just because somebody has said it, it does not mean it happened. I know, and most therapists know that when you have a client, they can lie, they can embellish, and it's important to get to the truth, the actual truth. And sometimes you don't, sometimes you can't. And sometimes as a therapist, you can read between the lines, you can pick out differences in their story, which is why client notes are incredibly important because we can look back at things and kind of go, okay, hang on a minute, you said this here, but now you're saying this, which one is the truth? Um, because as much as Harry can lie in his book, in his interviews, he knows the truth. He knows that whether this fight actually happened. Um, so you have this, um, him talking about this fight that allegedly happened. And again, it's around Megan. Now, I'm not saying that it didn't happen because nobody knows. If this fight happened, then it happened between two people um, and they know the truth. But what Harry banks on, unfortunately, is that he's talking about this. And I, and I actually am not sure what the relevance is to him bringing this up in the book. You know, he acts as if this is incredibly traumatic. OK, now let's look at this. You can have an argument with two brothers, two sisters, whoever. And maybe if they do something out of character, it can be incredibly hurtful. So if William has never had a physical altercation with Harry before, he can find this traumatic. Yes, that can happen. Why he felt the need to put it in the book, um, to me, I'm not sure. The only reasoning I can think of is that he has used this book either as the way you would write your journal and felt that it was okay to put that out there, but knowing that his brother doesn't say it, is not able to say something back. Now, knowing the character when we look at the character of Harry and William, I would be more inclined to believe that it was Harry that attacked William. So here's what I potentially think happened, going off the fact that there has been numerous reports of Harry being very, very aggressive. Um, and I will get to a more troubling rumour that, that is circulating around at the moment. And do I believe this to be true? So you have numerous not just um, rumours, but evidence of Harry being aggressive with people, reporters, the way he speaks about people. He's quite derogatory towards women. Um, whereas William, there hasn't, I don't think there's ever really been, I mean, you've seen William get angry when it comes to being quite protective, but I don't think I've seen any altercation of him attacking anybody. So what I think potentially happened is and I'm just I'm getting a little bit frustrated with the fact that I can't well, my chin keeps disappearing <laughs> um what I think potentially happened is William went across to talk to Harry about Meghan and I think Harry got angry and I possibly think that he attacked William or he went for William and William probably defended him and shoved him back and he fell and he probably did fall on the floor now there is a picture which I will put up here or here whichever of um, Nottingham Cottage which I believe is where they were staying at that particular time now you can look at the layout of this kitchen firstly the dog bowl is metal now okay argument's sake you could say he changed the dog bowl but look at where the dog bowl is situated. Most people that have dog bowls are not in the middle of the floor. 
they're up against a counter or a wall or something most i'm not saying all but you can clearly see in this picture that the dog bowl is up against uh, a fridge or something like that you can see that and it's not and it's metal so i probably would say that he william shoved him back after harry going for him and he fell on the floor and he probably but it's the fact that he also says and i broke my necklace firstly men never ever call uh certainly not in the uk call a neck uh, a necklace a necklace women do but men call it a chain so this tells me that a woman wrote this this didn't this wasn't harry so i think megan wrote this bit of the book i think this situation happened and megan has twisted it and written it the way she's written it and again this is my theory don't know it to be true because obviously I don't know but this is just my opinion in what I kind of know so I think he fell on the floor and I think he probably did break his chain um and he probably banged into the as he fell banged into the dog bowl and knocked it but they've embellished on this and this is very common for narcissists people with histrionic to do this type of thing they embellish on a story to make it more dramatic so that's what I think happened. I don't believe for one second that William attacked because you've got to look at it as well. Why? Why would he just randomly attack Harry? He's gone over there to talk about something that apparently Meghan has done um, and the way she's behaved in being rude. And then all of a sudden he's having this conversation and he just randomly then attacks Harry. That makes zero sense. So it makes more sense to me that he then went over to talk to Harry. Harry got incredibly angry and, and went to attack William. William, to protect himself, and reacted and shoved him back. Harry fell and then, uh, you know, hit the dog bowl, possibly broke his necklace. Chain. <laughs> necklace. Um, but I think Megan, I think he relayed this to Megan and she wrote it and embellished on it but then the interesting thing then which clearly harry doesn't really understand is that he then apparently was so traumatized which again like i say is not uncommon if it's something out of character but he apparently was so traumatized that he had his therapist on speed dial but yet allegedly when megan was having suicidal thoughts which like i say nobody really picked up on the fact that this woman is heavily pregnant and allegedly and apparently was having suicidal thoughts of taking the life of herself and her unborn baby but that got very swept under the rug because and but then went out that evening to watch Cirque du Soleil and looked like the cat that got the cream. Harry looked quite traumatized so what I think happened there was that she threatened it she threatened it she 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 basically used it as manipulation so, of course, Harry's upset. Um, but he managed to ring his therapist, but wasn't able to do that when apparently this happened. Well, that's because I don't believe it did happen. Um, but I think that proves it. But again, the media don't pick up on this. Why The media don't sit there and kind of go, hang on a minute. How comes you had your therapist on speed dial? But yet, apparently, when your wife was going through all these troubles, you weren't able to... Um, call your therapist to get somebody to help her how does how does that work um I mean let's not also look at the fact that she had apparently if you know if she was pregnant around this time that um that she would have had nurses doctors on on hand but apparently none of them she, she couldn't speak to any of them uh I think her personal hairdresser uh, had come down wasn't able to speak to him her mother is in the the field of mental health wasn't able to talk to her mother um yeah so i think all of those things I, in my opinion I, I i just don't believe this to be true and this and this is the thing a therapist can actually not believe somebody and especially when there is clear proof that something is off you know if you want to work on yourself and you want to heal you also have to own responsibility in the fact that you're lying to yourself or lying to others um now, OK, a therapist wouldn't necessarily come out and go, you're lying, um, but they certainly would challenge a lot of therapists. I certainly would challenge somebody and kind of go, OK, this is what you're telling me here. This is what you said there. It doesn't quite match up. So kind of what's going on for you here? What's what's happening? 
and you would create them to kind of look at something because otherwise what's the point you're not going to heal you're not going to improve your life if you are going to be sitting in lies um it's not going to benefit anybody and then really what you're then doing is paying paying money to a therapist who's just sitting there kind of agreeing with everything you said and that can happen don't get me wrong which i which could possibly be happening with harry over there if he is speaking to somebody that they are agreeing with everything he said and not challenging him um and that is their choice and it's harry's choice if he chooses to carry on doing that um, all you're doing is enabling and colluding with them. Um, you know, this is why if a client says something and laughs, say, say they talk about something traumatic and then they laugh, a therapist would not be ethical in laughing with them. What you would do is do nothing because what you're doing is collude. If you, if you laugh with them, um, you're colluding with them, which is not right. So you wouldn't laugh. And then what that could do is then create the clients who look at the fact that, okay, the therapist isn't finding this funny. Maybe this isn't funny. Um, so if a client, if we're very aware that a client is lying um, or certainly um, changing their story, we would necessarily, well, I would, I can't speak for other therapists. I would, I would challenge them on that. Gently, I wouldn't go, like I say, I wouldn't go, yeah, you're lying. Um, because there could be various reasons why uh, someone changes their story or, you know, but this isn't therapy. And I've said this before, this is me talking about a situation that I believe and I give my opinion on that. So there are so many holes then in the story that comes out that kind of then begs the question, did this actually happen? And especially when, like I say, you would never encourage somebody to, to heal from something by attacking somebody else that's not healing you know harry talks about this everyone's leaked stuff about him he doesn't take any responsibility for anything anything i as i'm reading this book i do not hear or or read any responsibility and that's dangerous when you can literally look at um versions of events and take no accountability because what again one of the first things that a therapist would say is okay yes I can see how that is the responsibility of said person but what can you change what could you have done differently how do you feel that you can look at that in a way that um, you take accountability for something Harry doesn't he doesn't take accountability and then what happens then was when he's called out on something for example I didn't call my family racist when there is absolute physical proof. But what he's doing is he's twisting it in the fact that. And what's interesting is he said Megan didn't. Megan didn't say not I didn't or we didn't because they both were saying it. Um, and like I said, I've talked about the two different varying stories. But again, the media didn't pick up on this. The media didn't talk about. Hang on a minute. Harry said it happened before, kind of as they very first got together, but Meghan's saying it when she was pregnant. If there's two different varying stories, then the chances are this is not strictly, that it's not a very trustworthy source. Um, so, of course, that comes out and he's saying, and he says in the English with Tom Bradbury, no, I never, no, Meghan never said. And of course, it's because she never actually said the word racist. Heavily implied, race was mentioned. But like I said, this went on for two years and they collected an award for tackling structural racism within the royal family. If they are not, were not calling their family out, why would you collect an award? Why would you kind of go, you know what? Yeah, well, why would you say, actually, no, that's not what we called our family and we're not going to collect an award for that. Harry knows very well what he's done. But of course now saying, well, we never said that. It's a very immature response. You know, he could have said, I can see how it looked. Um, and perhaps we were wrong in what we said. He could have owned it, but he didn't. And I would have had more respect for him if he'd have owned it, but he didn't. It was literally like, I never said that. We never said that, which is a very immature response. Um, and I've talked about before how I think Harry has arrested development, because if the way he talks in some in some areas, it's incredibly immature. And then we have the the Taliban He's now come out and said, 
well, the, the press said I boasted. No, actually, the press didn't say you boasted. What a lot of military have come out and said he's acting as if he's boasting. Um, and they're going off the way he's spoken about it, what's in his book. But the fact is, and then, of course, he then spins it and says, well, the reason I said that is because I want to stop suicides in veterans. Well, if that's the case, why didn't you mention that in your book? Why did you say this comment and then kind of then you could have added on? And the reason I'm talking about this was because I think it's very important that we, we you know, we do talk about these things. Um, He didn't. And the, so to me, the only reason he's now saying this now is because he's got backlash for it. His PR team or whoever's around him has said, oh, you know, you need to come out in front of this and kind of go, right, the reason I said this is because. But it makes zero sense. And also what gives him the right? What gives him the right to discuss and say something that has been a code of conduct for years and years and years? What gives him the right to think that he's important enough to come out and say, I think this needs to be changed? Why? You know, and, 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 I'm, and this is why I'm doing it. You know, who, who are you to erase years of content? Now, don't get me wrong, should there be improvements? Absolutely. Absolutely. And suicides of anybody, let alone our military, should absolutely be looked into. But what has he actually done to help that? What has he done? And what he's done now is, and again, this man who completely blames the press for everything. The press twists this. The press are blamed for that. Well, if you know that, Harry, why did you write it? Why did you say the palace you know, there's racism within and accept award for it. If you are aware, like I've said, if you are aware, the press manipulate, twist, lie. Um, why would you say, give them something to twist anything? Why would you even say it? Um, he again, taking zero responsibility for anything that he says. Um, and this is where I feel that Harry... <sighs> this this very troubled man as just it's it's just going to keep going and of course now the threat of well there was enough for a second book again the, there's things that you, why would you even say it you can say i had i had stuff to to write a second book but what he goes on to say is oh i had enough for a second book but i didn't because um um it would look it would be very damning for my brother and my father and perhaps they wouldn't forgive me well, I would really probably say that they're not going to forgive you now, Harry, because what you've done is divulged deeply personal things about them and you haven't you haven't done it. You know, you haven't haven't done it. Deeply personal thing. <laughs> I, do you know what? My brain just went off then. I heard <laughs> I heard something and because I heard something, I kind of lost my train of thought and went into another conversation. <laughs> so yeah so I think that you know Harry's not taking into account the way he's the way he's behaving and his responsibility in this um and every time he's called out on something it is somebody else's fault now a lot of people are reporting the fact that there is a rumor circulating about Harry um behaving terribly towards um women and things are coming out that he's um that apparently the the palace have tried to hide this um and I'm not going to say the word because I'm pretty sure that a lot of you will know um it's he's accused of and I will say um because obviously I don't want to be very triggering of of of, of an assault um and if this is true that's incredibly worrying to me. Um, do I think Harry is capable of this? I would like to think not. I don't want to believe, I mean, as much as I don't agree with what he's done and the things that he said, I don't want to believe that he's capable of this. However, the way he talks about women in this book is very worrying to me. Um, he is quite condescending and quite derogatory. He talks about people um and an, an ex, a, a matron that he grew up with and he's he's very unkind to her in this book and it's like where's the due care for how she might feel if she hears about this or reads it i mean i think it's terrible the, the way he's spoken about her 
um, the things he said in regards to even his mother, the, the queen, you know, the, the just there's just something that doesn't sit right, which creates me to feel that he has an issue with women. And I am then inclined to, now don't get me wrong, losing a mother is terrible. Losing a parent is terrible, um, especially at a young age. Um, but... And and I and I'm possibly going to get in trouble for saying this, but I am since I've started reading this, I am actually inclined to think that Harry is using. I don't actually think he has these deep rooted, um, this deep rooted love and feelings for his mother. Um, there is something underlining here that actually tells me that he's very angry with his mum. He's and and unfortunately this can really go the other way in and in, in siblings and I've certainly seen this. Um it's very it's it seems very dark. It's almost as if he is using his mother's death because he realizes that's where money is. And and I might be wrong and I might be wrong in saying that, but I just, I've learned to trust my instincts. I've been doing this a long time and I've learned to trust my instincts. Something is off. I am inclined to think that he has got some deep, deep issues, as I'm sure that's pretty obvious, but, but also in the fact that I think he has got this deep-rooted darkness, this anger, um with regards to women and I think that's certainly coming out and I dare say it but I think that this is potentially going to be used against him in the divorce when it happens um and I wonder if the fact that this is this rumor is circulating about what he's potentially done um is going to come out in the divorce Megan has gone very quiet, which makes me think uh, there's rumours that she's she's uh, I've said before, I've said all along that I don't believe they're living together. I think they're only together for the sake of PR purposes. But I think a divorce is happening. And I genuinely think there is something very wrong with Harry in regards to how he views women. So could it possibly be that he could do this? The fact that he has this air of, I'm a royal, I'm a prince, I can kind of do what I want, say what I want. Um, yes, it's possible. It's possible. I think given the right circumstances, he he could, I, I don't think he would see it as that. I think he would see it as him, um, he's allowed, he, he, it's his right because of who he is. Um it's it's a very it's a very difficult one because again you know no evidence has come out but i've said before that i think archie um is real and i have said before that i think that he slept with somebody possibly a staff member now is it possible that this particular staff member is the person in this said rumor and archie is the result of this possibly don't know um however if that is true i feel deeply concerned for the woman involved because um this has obviously been put pushed under the carpet so to speak and that's not fair for her at all and it does make then sense to me how the obviously then the the fact that we i and a lot of us believe that megan wasn't pregnant that she would have been in on this. I think she knew about it. And which then probably then says that the, the royal family knew about it, which I would be devastated, if I'm honest, if um, if this is true. Now, it's to me, it's either he had an affair and he got somebody pregnant or this is the truth, this, this rumour that's circulating. It seems a bit bizarre. And we've certainly seen this before because it's come out before about the way he's um, he's dealt with um women who are of the night persuasion should i say i don't want to 
I don't, I don't like the name that they get called because I think it's quite derogatory, but, but cool girls or, you know, however you escorts or however it is that you kind of want to um, say, if that's true, that there's been certainly those rumours circulation that he treated them pretty badly. Um, and it then also creates me to, that it makes sense that then he would go for somebody like Megan, who is quite dominant. Um, and I think this is where Harry's issues of looking for a mother figure in a in a uh, sort of unhinged way. And I think Megan fed that in the way that she acted as if she was Diana. Um, but I think some of that anger would, would certainly have come out. And I think that's why they're quite toxic together. And I think she po probably would have, it would have been very much about I know this about you, you know this about me, um, we can make this work as in let's get together and get married, Let we can make this work. Um, and then on the surface, it looks like we're this most amazing couple, you help me, I'll help you, um, quid pro quo. But unfortunately, when you come with someone that's very, that can come across very violent and aggressive, as in Harry's behaviour, then coupled with a narcissist, that's, that's never going to end well. But I think yeah so we'll see we'll see but let me know what you think in the comments um do you agree with with me do you think this is um something that could potentially be true do you believe um the fact that William attacked Harry or are you like me and think it was probably the other way around and they just embellished on the story um yeah let me know what you think in the comments and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you want to subscribe to my channel um please do because it does help the algorithm um thank you for watching if you would like to um support me in any other way whether it be you would like to buy me a coffee the link is in the description box or it's right by above the subscribe button on my channel um Please, if you haven't already, please go across and give my son some love on his channel, on his very, very new channel. I'm really trying to get him up to a thousand subscribers. Um, so please go across and give him some love. Um, um, yeah, and if you want to go and buy my merchandise or want to contact me via email, if you have something that you would like to ask me or you'd like to some, some support, please contact me and I will get to you. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much. Um, oh yes, and I have a PO box because uh, people still keep asking me. Yes, I have a PO box. It is in the description box of the video. Um, so yeah, so let me know what you think. And as always, I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. Mwah. Bye bubble family.